Recently, during my yearly charity stream, I decided to see how long it would take to speedrun Cuphead while carrying my little sister Cassie, a person who's never played the game before. In Cuphead, when playing two-player, every boss gets twice as much health as normal, so this was definitely going to be a challenge, even with my almost 200 hours of experience. Also, my goal was to get a sub one hour time, and here's how it went. Now to begin the speedrun, we want to start out with Forest Follies in order to get some coins to spend on the shop. In this stage, my plan was to just go at full speed and see if Cassie could keep up, since worst comes to worst, I could finish it myself without losing any time. And she survived for at least a bit. Yeah, maybe I should have prepared her a bit better, but still a pretty good start since we got all the coins we needed and could move on. So we went straight to the shop and got both the lobber and the spread shots since they're the best for the speedrun, even though Cassie did have a little bit of problems actually putting them on. Anyways, we made our way over to the root pack, and for this first boss, I told Cassie to stay back and shoot lobbers while I stood right in front of the bosses and hit them directly since the most useful thing for her to do would be to stay alive. And with this strategy, we defeated the first two vegetables together with her finally going down to the carrot, but I was able to easily pick up the win afterwards. Then we were on to Ribby and Croak, which definitely ups the difference difficulty. They can do two different attacks at the start. First is Croak's fly attack, and it's really easy to deal with since one of us could shoot up in the air with the spread shot while the other actually did damage. But Ribby's attack takes a bit more learning to do because of its pattern, though Cassie caught on surprisingly fast and only got hit once. Next, while they were transitioning to their second phase, we both jumped over the rolling attack, but I forgot to explain how your movement works during Croak's wind attack. Basically, while he's using this, you move a lot slower to the right and faster to the left, and these mechanics unfortunately caught Cassie off guard and took her out in a place I couldn't save her. For these first few bosses though, they're never really a problem to finish out myself, and I'm just proud that Cassie was able to stay alive for around half of the fight. Honestly, it's really impressive for a first playthrough. Anyways, I got Ribby and Croak onto their last phase, and slowly took them out with my lobber, making sure not to play too risky, as we couldn't restart the speedrun and try again, all of this had to be the first try. But yeah, not too hard, and we're moving on to Goopy. Now one thing I should mention for this fight, is since we were doing a charity stream during the challenge, I wasn't fully focused on helping Cassie, and didn't give her nearly enough advice for Goopy. So yeah, the easiest boss in the game resulted in her quickest death, but at least I learned early on that I would need to be a bit better at explaining future bosses for Cassie. Anyways, for the rest of this fight, it's Goopy we're talking Talking about, he's not too much of a challenge. The only thing that was kind of annoying was his two times health, but we took him out nice and easy. And then that led us on to Hilda, our first flying boss. At first, Cassie had the problem of staying a bit too close to Hilda because Cassie didn't want to miss her shots, but that caused her to rack up some unnecessary damage and she died pretty quickly. Luckily though, I was able to revive her since it's a lot easier in the flying levels than it is in the regular ones with our added mobility. Other than that, it mostly just came down to Cassie having not experienced the attack patterns before and that made things like the bull charge which are super fast harder for Cassie to deal with, and she did end up dying after a bit. Other than that though, pretty normal Hilda fight, I finished off that phase, got her in her moon, used a bunch of EXs, and beat this boss battle damageless, which led us to the last boss fight of IL-1, Cagney Carnation. Finally at this point, I decided that maybe giving Cassie the lobber wasn't the best idea. It adds another unnecessary learning curve, when it's better to focus more on staying alive, so I decided to change her back to a pea shooter after this fight. But even with the lobber, Cassie was able to stay alive the entirety of the first phase, and that meant I could clean up the second. I did kind of embarrassingly almost die here just from not paying attention, but I was able to finish this terrible flower out and got IL-1 down without a single restart, so we were doing great. But it was time to up the difficulty with IL-2 and our sixth boss of the game, Beppy the Clown. I'm not the biggest fan of Beppy because he used to be my number one point of reset when I was just learning the speedrun of the game, but nowadays I've spent way too much time in this fight, so I wasn't worried. The biggest issue for Cassie though came in the second phase with the dog balloons since they were overwhelming her and took a bit too many lives. There wasn't much I could do to help, so when we finally got Beppy onto his horseshoe phase, Cassie got taken out and I couldn't save her. Thankfully though, Beppy isn't too hard to take out from there, and I got him onto his last phase with 2 HP left. So I went about doing normal Beppy strats like EXing directly on him, and taking out his annoying penguin dudes to be a bit safer, but finally, it resulted in another fight won. So now it was time for the genie, another airplane level, and this one did not go the greatest for Cassie. Immediately he used his sword attack and took out all of Cassie's health, since it's hard to tell exactly where the swords will go when you're a new player. 
but thankfully it's an airplane level, so I saved her and we moved on. For the next phase though, I gave Cassie a bit of bad advice and told her to stay small so she could dodge the obstacles more easily. What I didn't consider though, is that it's harder to control the speed of the small airplane and that got her taken out. From there, it was just me again and I got done with the coffin phase pretty easily, but once on his marionette, here's where things went bad. I had 2 HP at the start of this phase, but through some of the worst gameplay I've done in a while, I got overwhelmed and we got our first restart of the run, but hey, 7 bosses in isn't too bad. Thankfully, I redeemed myself immediately after that, taking out the marionette and the genie's last phase without too many problems. But now I knew I needed to focus a bit more for the rest of the run, especially if we wanted to beat the game within an hour. Next up is Bon Bon, who's definitely one of the harder bosses for new players, and one that I like switching to the pea shooter for. She started out with her gumball attack, which follows you around, but because it decided to focus on me, when Cassie tried to dodge it, she ended up getting hit. Then came the waffle, but Cassie's actually really good at dealing with him. What she wasn't too good at dealing with though was the little guys coming out of Bon Bon's castle, which started on her second phase, and eventually they were able to do her in without me being able to save her. At the very least, the last mini boss was Bon Bon's easiest, the gumball machine who very easily died after just a bit of attacking. So from there I went straight over to Bon Bon, he X'd her in the face a few times, and finished her out with some pea shooter shots, which means we're on to Wally. Wally is yet another airplane fight, but this time Cassie learned from the first one. She stayed in the back and shot from far away, rather than getting up close and personal like for Hilda. The real problem happened during the second phase though, where I decided to use my Super EX and told Cassie to use her three regular ones. But unfortunately, she thought she also had a Super EX since she just saw me using it, which you only get when you have five cards, and I wasn't able to save her. Kinda my bad though for not reminding her. At least after that, it's a pretty easy fight like Wally usually is. We have his little bird phase where he has the eggs spinning around him, and his big, almost dead bird phase where we just finish him out with our secondary shot, and again, I didn't take a single hit of damage. But now it was finally time for the speed run to really ramp up in difficulty since we had to face Grim Matchstick. Now this dragon is probably one of the hardest bosses to learn, mostly because you have to pay attention to both his attacks and jumping between the moving clouds. But surprisingly, Cassie did amazing in this fight. I told her to focus on staying alive rather than damaging the dragon, and we finished the first phase pretty easily. Then the second phase came by with the jumping fireballs, and she survived that pretty well too, besides one death that I was thankfully able to save her from. So yeah, it was amazing how well she was doing. But then while transitioning to the third phase, I died because of a bad dash, and asked Cassie to save me. But this was the first time I asked her to save me, and she forgot how to parry, pressing every other button, and we lost for the second time. So yeah, could have went a bit better. Then to make matters even worse, after getting to the third phase again, I died to the dumbest fireball so close to the ending, so yeah, the dragon strikes again. Finally though, on the third try, we got the win, but sub 1 hour was starting to get a lot tougher. At the very least, we were on to aisle 3 and getting close to the end of the game. But unfortunately, our next boss was Rumor Honeybottoms. This bee crushed my dreams so many times when I was just learning Cuphead speedrunning, so I was definitely a bit intimidated. But my plan was to save as much health as possible for her last phase and hope we could win from there. Now sadly, Cassie did get out right after the first phase, but that was fine since the second phase is probably the easiest. The bee started out with the middle attack, which you can just jump up and fall down the platforms to dodge, so it's pretty simple. Then she used the ball attack, which is a bit more intimidating, and I even got hit with it, but hey, one health is definitely enough, right? So finally, I made it to her last phase, where she sends waves of heat-seeking fists. This is probably one of the hardest attacks in the game to dodge, and I was pretty certain I was going to lose here, but I played absolutely out of my mind, and we got yet another win. That one was way too close though. Still, there was no time to breathe, because the robot was next, and it's way harder in 2 player. For the robot's first phase, we need to hit 3 different parts of its body to break them. The problem though is that in 2 player, it took way more damage to break these parts than I was used to, which resulted in a few unnecessary hits. Then after breaking his body, we need to go for his heart. This part of the fight isn't that long, but there's a ton of stuff you need to dodge, and both Cassie and I died at the exact same time. I mean, pretty cool we synced up our deaths at least. Anyways, we made it back to this point again with 1 HP each, and beat the heart to get onto the flying head phase, where we prepared to use our super EXs. If we could both hit the head with one, the robot would go right to his last phase. Unfortunately though, Cassie took a little too long, 
resulting in her super being wasted, but we still got the phase done right after. And finally on his last phase, I actually think it's the easiest. All we need to do is dodge a bunch of attacks and I almost never mess up on it, but the stress got to me this time, so we took yet another death, and I won't lie, this speedrun was definitely starting to weigh on my mental. At the very least though, I went straight back, destroyed the robot, and it was time for the next two bosses. And the nice thing is these bosses are kind of hard, but I wasn't really worried about dying at all. Sally stage plays fight consists mostly of a bunch of slow attacks that you have a lot of time to dodge. It was a bit harder for Cassie because she needed to figure out the attack patterns, but I kept Sally focused on me so Cassie would have time to do that. The second phase is a bit harder though because of the dumb baby who drops bottles through the windows and all the cars that drop down on you from the ceiling, so here's where Cassie got taken out, but I cleaned up shortly after. Then the third phase is the devil phase where we want to use a few EXs at the beginning and make sure we take our time to open the moon and use that to jump over the big wave. Other than that though, really simple phase. And finally in the last phase, you just need to keep jumping, using the spread shot, and slowly take her down. There is the umbrella which is a bit annoying, but way less so than attacks from other bosses in the game, so we finished it out quick. Next after that, it's time for Werner Wurman. His first phase is kind of hard because you need to react to his pretty large attacks and make it through some small gaps in them to not get hit. So it was a little hard for Cassie, but she made it through with a few revives. Then for the next phase, I told Cassie to pretty much just follow my movements so we didn't get hit by Warner's fire attack or the bottle caps coming from the side. Sadly though, we got really unlucky RNG with this bottle cap attack and Cassie wasn't able to dodge it in time. Still though, I kept my 3 HP into the last phase and just had to take out the cat who's super easy, especially since I can hit him with spread shy EXs. So yeah, that was a nice little break. Time for more pain though, since we're on to Captain Brinnybeard. Brinnybeard is probably one of my least favorite bosses, and another one that I like to switch back to the pea shooter for. This is because if you want to hit him with the lobber, you need to be really close to him, and you may as well be using the spread shot at this point. The main annoying things are the barrel that constantly moves around and tries to stomp on you, and the pink octopus attack where Brinnybeard tries to shoot you. Now I like to play this fight risky by using the spread shot as much as possible, but what I didn't anticipate is how much health this dude has on 2 player. He takes forever to just beat his first phase, and that resulted in a death for me, but hey, we still had Cassie to finish out the fight, and I was pretty confident, oh there she goes. Anyways, like usual, we learned from our mistakes, and finally got onto the second phase after what felt like forever. Though it was just me alive at this point, and I only had 1 HP, so I had to play this super safe. The main strategy here is to stay back to dodge the fireballs, bait the barrel to stomp when it's more convenient, and go close to the ship when he's about to use his really long beam attack, so we can get some spread shots in during it. And finally, with all that in mind, I was able to clutch up the win. But we aren't done with water bosses just yet, because now it's time to fight Calamaria, but I was a bit less worried about this since it was another plane level. This boss has tons of stuff to dodge almost everywhere on the screen, but it's really just a matter of learning the patterns, and it isn't too bad. And like for a lot of this video, Cassie was really quick on the uptake and learned surprisingly fast. I did forget to tell Cassie though not to use EXs while Maria's transitioning to her second phase since she's invulnerable, so oops. But we still had a pretty great start, and I still had 3 HP. Unfortunately, this is where Cassie finally got taken out because of all the EO attacks which are pretty hard to dodge for a first time player, but I made it through and got to the last flying head phase. And in this phase, as long as I play it smart and don't take damage while frozen, it's pretty easy and that's another win. Which means finally we're on to the last three bosses of the speedrun, but only have 10 minutes left if we want to beat our sub 1 hour goal. And the first of those three was Phantom Express, which I was honestly a bit worried about. First phase is easy though. You can pretty much just shoot forward with the pea shooter to hit both the boss and the icy throws, while also making sure to hit the pumpkins before they can drop their soap bars to move our carts over. Then the second is pretty much the same, though we're shooting up instead of to the side and moving the car to be by the head. I had Cassie solely focus on shooting the boss while I moved the cart. And with this strategy, we both still had full health through the first two phases. Well, almost. The third phase is where it gets a bit harder though, since there's a head on both sides of the screen that we need to take out. The best way to deal with it is staying all the way to one side so their lightning attack can't hit you, and then shoot them in between that attack. With this strategy, we can take out one head, move the cart over, and then take out the second. Finally on the last phase, we need to open up the train's furnace by parrying its tail before proceeding to hit its furnace heart, all while dodging fireballs and bones coming out. But sadly, literally at the last second of the fight, Cassie and I got hit with the exact same fireball and had to restart everything. Yeah, this one really hurt. At least it felt good taking our revenge a couple minutes later. So yeah, not the greatest fight, but we're moving on to King Dice now. 
This fight starts by having to hit his three-sided die, and depending on which number we get, we fight that mini boss. For a speed run, we want to start out with a three so we can fight Mr. Wheezy. This guy isn't too bad to deal with. All we need to do is move to the opposite side of him when he switches positions and dodges swirly fireball attacks. I didn't prepare Cassie enough though, so she got taken out and I couldn't save her, but I wasn't too worried since I'm really confident in my King Dice boss fight. Next, we get a one to go on a safe space and then a three, which gave me an extra heart and I got to fight this horse dude. This one's really easy since all we need to do is dodge the present, which explodes into horseshoes and the blue horse riders at the bottom of the screen since they jump up. Took a single hit here, but we got it done pretty quick. Then we're gonna get another three to fight the easiest boss in the game, the eight ball. This guy has extremely slow moving attacks and he doesn't have a hitbox on his body so we can hit him with spread shot EXs. Yeah, he's a bit pathetic. So yeah, that's the mini boss is done, meaning we can get a two and then another two to finally fight King Dice. For this final bit, I always aim up at his head and parry off the cards to avoid getting hit. This is a really hard attack when you're just starting out, but after learning it, it's almost as easy as the eight ball. So slowly but surely, we take him out, meaning we just have one more boss to beat. You might notice though, with all of our deaths, we missed the sub one hour goal right here, but we weren't gonna let that stop us, we're taking out the devil. And the devil is definitely up there with the hardest bosses in the game, so we needed to play smart. He has a ton of different attacks he can do at random, meaning it's really hard to teach the fight to a brand new player, and this resulted in Cassie dying pretty quickly, me saving her, and because I went for the save, I got hit down to 1 HP in that process. So not the greatest start in the world. Then just a bit later, Cassie did get taken out, and while it would have been nice to finish the final boss together, this is a speed run, so I wasn't gonna restart here. And after just a bit, I was able to finish out the first phase and get onto this one with his big head, which I actually think is easier. If you use your spread shot EXs at the devil's eyeball, it hits him completely, meaning we can finish off the second phase super quickly with only worrying about a few different projectiles. But after a while, things get more chaotic when he brings out the purple guys who try to shoot you from the side. So when I was trying to do an EX during this part, I got hit. Yeah, I probably should have just played it safer. It was fine though, I quickly made it back to this part, this time with 2 HP instead of just 1. And I was no longer scared of failure, we're finishing the run here. Unfortunately, I did get hit while the devil was transitioning to his last phase, but this phase barely takes any time to beat it all, so it was an easy victory, and that's all boss is done. Now we just needed to get to the credits and end off time with a 10446, which puts us in 22nd place on the speedrun.com leaderboards, and honestly, that's a lot better than I thought we'd be. And also, if you do want to see the full run, check the description for the charity stream VOD. So yeah, subscribe if you enjoyed. Bye.